Welcome to Garden Crossings. I'm Heidi. Today I'm going to give you an update on the butterfly house and how it is currently doing, along with all the beautiful plants that are blooming within. Let's go ahead and take a look. The flowers are doing absolutely gorgeous here in the butterfly house right now. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the things that we have in here. Uh, butterflies and caterpillars right now, not a whole lot going on. I've bought in several caterpillars and I think what's happening is, is we're finding some frogs in the butterfly house and I think they're eating the caterpillars. It feels like if it's not one thing, it's another. So it's a little bit of a struggle right now, uh, but I do know that I do know that there are some caterpillars. So hopefully they will be heading towards the chrysalis stage. So we'll get some butterflies and therefore hopefully more eggs and more caterpillars. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the plants right now that are blooming. Now this is inside of a greenhouse. So a lot of these plants are gonna appear like plants on steroids just because they're in a prime location. Lots of heat and lots of water. The first one we're gonna take a look at here is this giant butterfly bush. So this is the Miss Molly butterfly bush. It's over 10 foot tall, which is not normal. So don't be afraid. It's not gonna get that big if you grow it in your landscape. Like I said, we're in the very prime conditions in here. Lots of heat, lots of water. So you can see all those beautiful blooms. So this will be a great plant. So once we do have butterflies, it's just waiting on those butterflies. That being said, if any of you are local here to the West Michigan area and have swallowtail butterflies and or swallowtail chrysalis, we would love to introduce not only monarch butterflies into the butterfly house, but swallowtails as well. We have all the food source that we need for those caterpillars and butterflies. So we would just like to have you bring some in if you are local. Look at this beautiful gara. This is the Caroly pink, and that is just doing beautiful. Next, we have a coneflower, and this is coral craze. Super pretty coloration, lots of flowers on those. These plants are probably about two months ahead of schedule as if they were planted outdoors. The aquapot's doing beautiful. We've got the lobelaria in there, along with some salvia and lantana all of which are great plants for the hummingbirds and butterflies. Daisy May, lecanthemums, doing really nice. We have this border here lined with uh, verbena meteor showers, along with the uh, unplugged, or no, the rock and purple salvia. Great plants if you're doing a butterfly garden to add in. We have dill and fennel in here, and those plants are just waiting on black swallowtails, if anybody were to bring black swallowtails in. Lots and lots of Asclepias planted. We also have some just sitting in trays for extra food source. So there's plenty of food here for the monarch caterpillars, if we can find them. Also, the hollyhocks are doing phenomenal. Look how tall they are. This is the Cerise, Halo series, and Cerise is the color. Gorgeous pink blooms. Another giant butterfly bush. I kind of was hesitant to show you the butterfly bush because it is so tall, because um, I don't want you to think that that's how big they're gonna get out in your landscape, because they certainly aren't. The Allium Millennium are just coming into flower. Beautiful, whimsy border plant here. Making our way around, we've got the Lobelaria Snow Princess and the Lobelaria Violet Night. You can see how Snow Princess is a lot more vigorous in that violet night. Veronica, this is the purple illusion, Veronica. Behind it are some tropical milkweeds. Beautiful bee balm, Monarda. That is a gorgeous plant and a gorgeous color. As we make our way down the path, you can see these mahogany monster heuchera or corbels are doing really nice. And these have been in flower for pretty much all spring long. Another planting there of the Monarda. Gorgeous flowers. Crossing the aisle, we've got a few cone flowers just starting, along with the Shasta Daisy Banana Cream. Zinnias are also a nice flower to have in the garden if you're looking to attract hum uh, butterflies. So we've got a nice little cluster there of the zinnias. The Pugster butterfly bush, not blooming yet, but man, that thing is loaded with blooms. Those will all be flowers soon enough. Another Monarda. 
That's such a great color. Crossing the aisle, we've got a planting here of the Mini Vistas, the Mini Vista Yellow, Mini Vista Midnight, and Mini Vista Scarlet. And then there's a few of the white ones tucked in that are the Super Tunia Lattes. Milkweed Milkmaid, some yellow milkweed. There's a few cone flowers starting to bloom. And what do we have here? Orange You Awesome. And in the back there is Supreme Cantaloupe. That's a really cool looking flower. More of the Asclepius, the white Asclepius. Uh, this path we lined with the Ladybird Sunglow, or these are Ladybird Lemonade. Those are doing nice in this hot, hot area. Got some Verbena Sparkling Amethyst. More plants. These actually came back from last year. Fennel and dill, so those will be great once we get some of those black swallowtails in. Shiny Dancer Viburnum. Look at the nice shiny foliage on that. That's a great shrub with great foliage. Yellow Tropical Milkweed. Some more Veronica here. This aqua pot, we had uh, coleus in here as the thriller, and the coleus looks like it's just getting eaten alive. There is the trailing pink veined supertunias, along with bossa nova white begonias. There's other things in there too, but wow, we can certainly see who's winning the war there. Those trailing supertunias are gorgeous. Another ladybird. Sunglow is actually the color. I apologize. Hey, messed that up. Really a pretty plant, especially for those of you in the south. Another Supertunia, Mini Vista Midnight. Escalapius, Hello Yellow. That is gorgeous right now. Some Veronica tucked in there in the back. Some pink ones. Let me see if I can figure out what the name of that one is. There's a tag. Oh, Pink Potion is the pink. Another Petunia, the Mini Vista Scarlet. Globularia Snow Princess. Globularia Violet Night. Some Super Petunia Persimmon tucked in there. More Hollyhocks, really cool looking. It's amazing what you can grow in this protected area. Sedum, Sedum doesn't bloom until the fall. And look at the color on these already. This is the Rock and Grow Pride and Joy. Now don't worry about it splitting because out in the landscape where it's not as hot, you're not gonna see that happen. So we'll trim those back and we'll get them back on the regular bloom cycle um, to bloom in the fall. Some more persimmon and rock and purple salvia. Some flocks are just starting. Beautiful little bloom there. Some more sedum. This one is, I believe, tiramisu. Already starting to put some flower color on. Making our way around the corner. These delphinium, although they are look a little, little bit thirsty, they are gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful stalks of purple blooms. Some more salvia. Ikea Fizzy Mizzy, a little bit past its prime, but just look at all the flowers that that had. Opening Act White Phlox, a little past its prime, but again, beautiful. And more Gara. So the plants right now are looking fabulous. Let's go see if we can find any caterpillars. If we are able to find any caterpillars, I may be a little surprised because the last time I was in here and saw them, they were pretty plump. So I would anticipate the ones that we got in last probably are already headed to the chrysalis stage. Uh, and chrysalis are usually hiding inside the plants, so it's often hard to find them. So we'll just go and take a look. One thing I do look for when I'm looking on the milkweed is for the caterpillar poop. And you can see there's quite a lot of poop there. So that tells us that there was a caterpillar present here fairly recently. And like I said, I suspect he's probably gone off to spin his cocoon. Here's a promising sight. Here's a few little caterpillars munching and crunching. So this is always good to see. 
Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And if you are new to our station, we welcome you to subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.